Hello and welcome to the Automation Python series. In this particular lecture series, we will be I'll be teaching you how to automate a birthday messenger. So the idea of this is to send a birthday message on Instagram to your friends. So it could be anyone, but uh, most likely you want to send it to your friends and not your strangers. So uh, in this lecture series, I'll be covering how to do so, just sending a message. Um, other things you could try is probably send images or videos. You could use the same concept I'm going to teach you to send images or videos, but I won't be covering that in this particular lecture series. That's for you to try on your own. So next, I will go to the structure and methodology. So I'd like to come up with a structure and methodology on how uh, I plan to tackle this problem. So this thing, this problem will consist of will be solved with two different things. One is firstly an Excel sheet, and the second is the Python script. So what the Excel sheet essentially stores is basically, uh, it's like a data storage. So it stores the name of your friend, your friend's birth date, and lastly, your friend's Instagram handle name. So that's only three things on the Excel sheet. So if, if, if you try to imagine it, it's basically just three columns. Uh, each of the column is the three items I listed earlier. So that's one part. And that Excel sheet ties the Python script. And they are interconnected, which means that the Python script basically reads the Excel sheet. And if you're wondering how to do so, it's basically using the Pandas library, of course. So the Python script consists of three main steps. So the first step would be opening Instagram. The second step, would be logging in into your Instagram account. And the third and final step would be sending the message. So I listed these uh, three steps in order, and there are going to be three different functions. So three functions uh, to carry out each of those three tasks. So now that you have an idea, um, I'm going to go to the next lecture and then teach you how, firstly, how to do the Excel sheet and later uh, how to code three of those functions. That's all. Thank you. Hi there. So before we actually uh, go in, in detail on different functions, firstly, uh, I would want to go through several things that you need to do first. So I'm just going to copy and paste. So these are the libraries that I'll be using. The main library would be Selenium. Uh, Selenium library. You could read more about Selenium in the documentary, but what Selenium basically does, it is that it simulates clicks. So for example, opening a web browser and clicking uh, at a particular button. That's what Selenium does. Uh, it simulates click. Besides Selenium, I'm going to uh, import the time library. So this is basically just a library to get my current date time. And the second other important library is Pandas. So Pandas is basically to read the Excel sheet later on. So three main libraries, Selenium, time and pandas we don't really need random but i'm just going to put it in okay so now that we have the libraries uh something uh, one thing that uh is required is opening chrome and in order to open chrome using selenium i would need to download the chrome driver so let me just run this function for you first so what so how do i download the chrome drivers very easy. So all I need you do need you to do now is to just go to this website, chromedriver.chromium.org slash downloads. Obviously, you could just uh, go Google search, Google search uh, Chrome Web Driver, and just click the first link, and it will bring you here. Uh, and then uh, I want you to click on your Chrome version. So mine is 89.0. I'm not sure what your version is. If you, are, if you don't know, uh, just download any version and try to run the code. Uh, if the code results, if the code will tell you, if there's an error in the code, it will tell you your, it will say it's like version error, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, go back and download your version. So anyway, my version is 89.0. I, I would click on 89.0. And then I would download the zip file corresponding um with whatever device i'm using so i'm using a windows so i would download the Win 32 if you're using a mac um, obviously mac 64 
uh, Linux. I don't think you'll be using Linux at all. So after you download the zip folder, extract it, there will be an executable file inside called the exe file. Uh, now, uh, something that's very important is that you need to put, so if you look here, you basically need to put your main Jupyter Notebook file. So this is my main Jupyter Notebook file, which I'm coding on, and the Chrome driver.exe in the same folder. Okay, um, I'm going to repeat myself, very important, to put the exe file, which you got, which you get from the Chrome driver zip file, and the Jupyter Notebook in the same folder. And of course, um, for convenience sake, just put the Excel sheet in the same folder as well. So this folder is basically, uh, is basically all the files that I need. Uh, just ignore this PowerPoint, this txt, and this other uh, Jupyter Notebook file. It's just uh, for me. Anyway, the three things that I need in this folder is Chrome driver, the Excel sheet, and your main Jupyter file, which you are coding on. Okay, let me go back to my Jupyter Notebook. So going back here, now that uh, I have downloaded my Chrome driver and put it into the same folder, I'm going to call my driver. So driver equals to web driver dot chrome and then i would put in the place where i put my chrome driver so if i go back there uh, my chrome driver i could right click it to get the properties and i could see is this is its location so i'm just going to copy everything copy its entire location i'll call it whatever folder you, you like it doesn't matter and i'm going to go back there and basically paste it so now my driver is in this uh, very location if okay so let's see what's the error okay uh, so the reason why after i copy it it doesn't work is that i need to put i need to put down the chrome driver.exe as well so i'm going to type chrome driver and just don't put the exe so this is my location of my folder, and this is my Chrome driver.exe. I run it, and the driver is loaded. So uh, that's all for this lecture. I just want to go through. Very important to set up it, set it up in this way: Chrome driver, um, Excel sheet, and and uh, and the Jupyter notebook all in the same file. Next, I'm going to let you look at what the Excel sheet looks like. So going there, I'm going to, going to double click on my Excel sheet. Like I mentioned before, the Excel sheet would consist of three columns, uh, which is the name of a friend. Second is the birth date. And lastly is the Instagram name. So just like that, very simple name, birth date, Insta name, and the rows basically correspond to um, your friends. So you could basically list them down one by one. Obviously, the more, the better, because you want to automate it. Uh, so that's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you. So in the previous lecture, we covered how to firstly download the Chrome Web Chrome driver and put it into the same folder together with our Jupyter Notebook as well as the Excel sheet. In this lecture, I'll be covering how, firstly, to grab, open up our Chrome, Google Chrome, and then opening up the URL that we want. To do this, I will code two functions. The first function is just to grab our Chrome driver, and the second function is to pass in the URL that we want to open. So I'm going to call the first uh, function as path. It wouldn't take in any arguments. And firstly, I'm going to call the global variable Chrome. And I'm going to call Chrome C-H-R-O-M-E uh, by opening our web driver web driver dot chrome so this basically starts a new chrome session second I would want to the second function is basically to open the URL that I want so I'm going to call the function URL name 
and it's going to take in one one variable which is the URL that I want to open and to open it I'm going to type chrome dot get my URL I'm also going to put uh, just a sleep time so this basically uh, pauses pauses uh, between the steps so a sleep time of four seconds so two functions so first so for example if I want to open Instagram firstly I will run I have to run path and secondly I have run my URL name function and for example um, HTTPS Instagram.com and I run it and if I look here it's loading and it opens this Instagram page so so far so good so another feature that's necessary for you to know uh, so in order to go to someone's profile uh, it, it goes by a slash and the person's Instagram handle so for example if I want to go to Barack Obama's Instagram page it'll be www.instagram.com slash Barack Obama and this should direct me to Barack Obama's this person's is called Barack Obama's page so if I want to go to another person's Instagram profile it's just here so if I can go to my Instagram profile uh, there it's here so very important to note Instagram followed by the Instagram handle okay so that's basically all I want to cover in this lecture we've gone through just um, one big giant function thank you hi welcome back so previously we covered how to um, open a URL using Chrome in this lecture I'll be telling you how to log in into your Instagram account using Selenium so firstly I'll, uh, we will create a function for this so one entire function uh, for this logging in purpose so for the first thing I do is I want you to go to open incognito mode and I'm going to go to my profile page so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simulate the clicks that I need to go through on the Instagram page in order to log in into my Instagram account so I'm going to open my Instagram account Instagram dot com and slash my profile okay I have entered so the first thing uh, which I see here is this cookies thing so and the first thing I will want to do is to click accept all so what I can do is I can inspect the HTML code for this and I I want to find what is the class for this accept all button and if I see here if I click on it it is uh, the letter half the letter half so it's b-i-i-d-r the letter half and that's the class for the button so what I would like to want to tell my selenium is to click on the button which is in the class b-i-i-d-r so going back to my uh, Jupyter notebook so the first thing I want to do is to accept cookies and I want to find that cookies so cookies equals to chrome and I want to find element by class so find element by class by class name and the class name if you recall is B I I D R so now uh, I use this Chrome to find the element B I I D R okay and the next thing I want to do once I found it is to simulate the click which is cookies just dot click simple and I'm going to put sleep for uh, several seconds just so that Instagram doesn't think it's a bot that's actually clicking it 
Okay, so now that I've accept the cookies, what's next? I'm gonna go back to my page. Uh, I'm gonna exit this. I click accept all. Great. The next thing I do is to click this login button. So right up here. And what I can do is again, I'm going to inspect and find the class for that login button. So I could see that uh, it is, this is the class name. Uh, so previously you see two things you take the letter half this time you take the middle one so it's l3 and ky so two it's the n and if three take the middle one so the class name for this button is l3 and ky uh, so exactly similar i'm just going to copy this and paste it but i'll change the name so instead of cookies this would be i'm call it uh, I'm going to call it lock button. So lock button. And the class name is L3 and KY. So I'm just going to go back to check L3 and KY. Perfect. And I'm going to click the button. So lock button dot click. And I'm going to call a sleep again for three seconds. So now that I, so I've accepted cookies and I've clicked the lock button. So I'm go back to this page and click the lock button here. Uh, one is username and the other thing is password. And I want to s enter in uh, the information in my username and password. However, unlike before, so for the previous cookies and login, it's click this time on the enter text in this box. So if I inspect it, if I click on it, I could see that this name for this box is called username. There's no, so instead of class name now, I'm just going to use name because it has a name, which is easier. So the name of that box is username and the name for this box is password. So perfect, username and password. So I'm going to enter in the username and password into the box. So user.chrome. Again, you see that the process is very similar. I'm going to find the element, but this time not by class name, but by name. Find element by, by name and it's username and I'm just going to copy and paste the password as well so P-A-S-S-W by name password so now that I find the element what do I want to write into the box obviously I want to enter in my own username and password so to do that to enter text it would be the send keys. So send keys, username, and password dot send keys, password. So these are two variables that you have to enter in. So now your function takes into arguments, your username and your password, which is entered here and here. Okay, so now I have sent my username and I have sent my password. I'm going back to install page. Okay, so now that I've entered in my username and my password, I want to log in and that could simply be done by just clicking enter. I don't have to click login, I will just click uh, enter on my keyboard. So I want to simulate and enter click on my keyboard. And enter would just be, so after password, I want to send keys again. Send keys and simulate the enter click, which is just keys dot return. So keys dot return is basically clicking enter. And so Instagram doesn't think I'm a bot. I'm just going to put a sleeping time of five seconds after I log in. So I have accepted cookies. I click the lock button. I've entered in my username password and entered it in. 
so far so good so i'm going to go back to this instagram page i'm going to enter in my username and password into my account okay so after i've logged in this is the page i arrive at which is whether i want to save my login information and you could save it but i don't want to uh, so i'm going to click on not now so again to simulate the click i would have to scroll over not now and see the class so three things the class is YWX7D. Note that all these steps have to be in order because these are the uh, order in order to log into Instagram. If your order is wrong, um, obviously, like you, if you click in the wrong order on the web page, it won't work. So everything has to be in order. So I'm not going to save it. So Chrome dot find element by class name. And the class name is YWX7D. And I'm going to click on it. And again, I'm going to put sleep. So there you go. So once after I click not now, I should be in my Instagram page and everything should be uh, saved and over. Great. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you and see you in the next lecture. Hi, welcome back. So we have coded how to log into Chrome. We also coded how to log in into Instagram. And in this lecture, I'll be covering how to send a message through Instagram. So this is where the fun part is. So once you have logged in and and go to the uh, person's page you want. Uh, now you will want to send a message. So I'm going to call my function called send message. And the same process, I'm going to go uh, to Instagram on incognito. So this is my uh, a friend of mine, his page. Uh, so he's a photographer and these are pictures of wildlife. So there's animals, uh, scenery, and it's really cool. And I suggest you, you could check it out. It's called uh, KLHQ underscore photography. So I suggest you to check it out. But back to the topic. So now they have entered into his page. Note it's Instagram.com slash his uh, Instagram handle. And I've arrived at this page. I have logged in. Uh, so everything is done. And now I want to send him a message. So how do I do so? I want, I would, so um, in real life, like without using Selenium, I would want to click this button here, message. And like always, now to find that class, I would need to inspect it. So if I hover over it, uh, message, I could see that the class is there, underscore 862 and M. So underscore 862 and M. So I would go back to my Jupyter Notebook. I would find that class, it's very similar to the previous login function. So on the find element by class name again. Find element by class name. And I entered in just now underscore it's six two nm. Okay, so now that I'm under the class What's next? You should already be familiar with this. It's message dot click. I would want to click on that button. And just to be safe, just put a sleeping time there. So I'm going to click the message and it brings me to this page. So another notifications, uh, turn on or not now. I want to click not now. So it's the same process again. I inspect find the class of not now it's h o l w m so i'm going to go and I go to the class and click on the class called h o l w m so this is to get rid of the sound that pop up as you have seen so i'm going to chrome dot find find element by class name and it's called h o l w m so H O L W M. If I go there and check, uh, yes, H O L W M. 
nothing wrong and dot click I'm going to click on it okay so now I click on not now next uh, I would want to find this area and enter in a text so this is very similar like the username and password where I want to enter in uh, a text in this text box here so I'm going to inspect firstly to find a class if I can't find the class I'll find the name so there is no class there is no name so the last thing if there's no class and no name I would want to find the tag the tag is called text area so I can't find the class I can't find the name I'm going to use the tag name this time okay so before that I'm just going to put another sleep of one second I'm going to call this as mbox chrome dot find element by so there's no class name by tag name so I'm going to find the element by tag name and the tag name is called text area and similar once I found it I want to enter text very similar to password it's just send keys so send keys and type in whatever message you want if it's a birthday automated birthday message you want to type something like happy birthday and after happy birthday uh, after every text box you want to click enter so mbox dot send keys and keys dot return okay so very simple that's how you send message so you just enter in your message here and you click enter and then it sends so that's what this function does um, I don't want to actually send it because I don't want to spam him with messages so now we are complete we have opening Chrome we have logging in into Instagram and we have sending message and in the next lecture I will go through the last part uh, to make it an automated birthday messenger thank you so now is the part where you want great so now is the part where you want to combine everything so we have seen how to log in into Instagram we have seen how to send a message into Instagram now is the part where we want to find someone's birthday on a particular date and on that date we would send uh, a birthday message to them on Instagram so uh, previously mentioned this is the Excel sheet the Excel sheet should contain three columns first is the name the Instagram handle of your friend uh, birth date so there's a day there's a month and there's a year um, and the Insta name so Insta name is their Instagram name sorry name is just their generic name and Insta name is their Instagram handle name where we the name where we want to send our message to okay so now going back to Jupyter Notebook to do this I would create a function okay so to create this function firstly I want to import pandas so pandas is library that connects uh, allows me to connect this Jupyter Notebook to my Excel sheet I'm also going to import uh, date time from the date time library so the purpose of this is to get uh, today's date so my function I would call it birthday check and the first thing that I want to do is I want to read the Excel sheet so using pandas to read the Excel sheet so I want to create a data frame read Excel Birth, birthday dot xlsx so this excel sheet must be in the same uh, folder as this Jupyter notebook file okay so now after reading uh, this excel sheet since birthday it's every year I only want to get the day and the month of my particular friend's birthday not the year because um, I'm supposed to wish him every year so to do that I'm going to create a column for my data frame called month and 
I'm going to use date time index to grab the birthday month. So B day. So if I go to my Excel sheet, I could see that it the col the column name is birth date. That's why birth date. Um, just trying to look at my my brackets dot month. So dot month allow me allows me just to grab the month. And the same thing, I will do the same thing for the day. So I'm going to call this column day. And I'm going to grab the day, D-A-Y. OK, great. So now I got the month, I got the day. I also want to create a list of names. So from the Excel sheet, I'm going to create a list of these names here. You will see its purpose later on. So name equals the list, birthday, name. So this basically just gives me um, a list of the person's name, a list containing uh, all the birthdays and a list containing all the birth month. So now I got three things. Okay. So to make it more manageable for me, I want to convert these two things into lists as well. So to do that, like how I did here, I could just call uh, birth date month, birth date month equals to list bday month. And I could also create a birth date day, which is the list of a same of the same thing. Day, day. So I'm just basically converting these columns in the data frame into list. Okay, and there's one more list that I need. So I got the name, I got the birthday day, birthday month, and I want the Insta name as well. So I'm going to call this list list Insta name goes to list b day in star name so now i got a total of four different lists all in order um next i want to make a dictionary so a dictionary basically uh, has a key and the object i want to make the name of the person as my key and the rest of these three items as the object in that dictionary i'm going to put all of them into a tuple so firstly, I'm going to create an empty dictionary. And I'm going to use a for loop to pass through my list. So dictionary, the key, uh, just repeating myself, would be the name. And the items would all be in a tuple. So firstly, I would put the birth date month after birth date month uh, birth date day and lastly the insta name so again this is the key and this is a two uh, object tupo in my dictionary containing three items okay so now that i have arranged all this uh, this entire excel sheet here nicely into a dictionary i want to know um, whether today is the person is the particular person's birthday so do that i'll get today's date so date equals to date time now this is where the date time now library comes in um, so in the, the date time now the date time at this instant moment that would give me the day, the month, the time, hour, minutes, and seconds. However, I only need the day and the month. So to do that, I'll just dot month. This would give me the month. And date time now, dot day. This would give me the day. So my date object has two items. Firstly, the month and then the day. 
Next, I'm just going to create an empty list called Insta Names. Again, um, you would see the purpose later on. So the idea now is to check whether uh, the whether in my dictionary there is any person's birthday, which is today's date. So, so I'm going to use a for loop to pass through my dictionary. I'm going to check. So if dictionary i i'm going to grab all the items in the dictionary uh, dictionary i so this basically grabs this uh these items here these two items birthday month and birthday day i'm going to check whether it's equals to today's date so equal equal to Uh, to equals equals to date so basically today's date and if this uh, is true I would then grab the instar names dot append I'm going to append the, the instar name into this list called instar names dictionary so this basically appends this Insta name into this Insta names list. So anyone whose birthday corresponds to this particular date and month of today would get their Insta names appended into this list here. And then I'm going to return this function basically returns this Insta names. Okay, so just to recap, this entire function is just to get, is just to find whether a particular person's birthday, birth date, corresponds to today's day and month. And if it does, it outputs a list of people who have their birthday today. So that's what this particular function does. So I'm going to run it. Hopefully there's no error. So there is an error import date time so it's from sorry so I'm again from date time import date time okay so there's no error now so lastly I'm just going to combine everything so what I've we have learned uh, cr opening Chrome logging in sending a message and getting a person's birthday. To do that, uh, firstly, I want to open my Chrome, which is this function here, the path function. It starts up Chrome. And then I'm just going to put a sleep just to make it seem less likely that I'm a bot. And I'm going to get for I in Insta names. So for anyone whose name is, is in Insta names, I'm going to open the URL. So the URL is https instagram.com I'm going to append the person's insta handle there and I'm going to open that particular URL so URL name URL so this function here URL name is basically here which is just basically opening that particular URL after which I'm going to log in using my username and my password which you would want to enter in this function here username password I'm not going to enter mine here because obviously for security reasons so after logging in uh, I'm going to send a message send message so which is this function here sending a message and the default message is happy birthday obviously you can customize this message to accept an argument um, and then you could just type your special message there and lastly I'm going to close Chrome so that's it for this lecture we have seen how uh, we connect the Excel sheet to Python 
and we have seen how to connect all the different functions to run it seamlessly.